and we're rolling. Good morning and welcome to our Friday podcast here on The Walk Off. I'm Scott Belford, joined as always by the best co-host in the biz, Adam Mack. Good morning. And uh, we had an off day yesterday. Yeah, I'm so lost in my schedule. I don't know how many days have passed. I don't know. After getting 30 games in 31 days, you almost become accustomed to just baseball every single day. Yeah. And there's something beautiful about a loss where you can just go right back to it the next day and hopefully wash that right out, that bad taste right out of your mouth. But, boy, did we ever have to sit and just let that Yankees loss just marinate. just sit in it, just marinate all around us. <laughs> well, I mean, y- y- yeah, tough sitting on a two-game sweep and just sitting there for a day soaking Ugh. it up but when you also consider that we lost the last two games against cleveland we're right in the heart of a four game losing yeah. streak right now well it seems like yeah. everyone in the al east just continues to win except for boston yeah um, we're only three games up on the orioles right now oh no it is uh black friday came early for jays fans for yeah. sure it is uh dark times right now but there are reasons to be optimistic and we do have a big show here. We'll uh, get things rolling first by doing the housekeeping, right? Socials. Yes, you can follow us on Twitter at Walk Off Podcast, on Instagram, the Walk Off Podcast. Available to all you audio listeners wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, always on YouTube. And feel free to subscribe and like whatever platform you're following on. It's obviously appreciated. We do do our Monday morning mailbag every Tuesday afternoon. And you can get a hold of us by reaching out to us. DM us on Instagram. Adam runs the Instagram. I run the Twitter. You can do the same thing uh, in Discord if you're so inclined to. Our Discord is free and open to everybody. We've got close to 150 pretty rabid Jays fans and members of the walk-off community in there. It's very cool. That is going to be a link in the show notes. Feel free to leave comments in the YouTube. Adam is very thorough going through all of the interactions and compiles a heck of of a questions and comments list for our mailbag so feel free to interact with us that way all right well before we say all right we do have patreon to get to so big thank you to ian jeremy joshua rashid simon john sarah and our newest member michael uh michael is okay so we have two tiers on our patreon yeah $4 $4 a month gets you the all-star tier. So just so everybody else in Discord knows that you're better than them. Um, it does get you access to all the behind-the-scenes content, the movie reviews, everything like that. Uh, but Michael is our first ballot Hall of Fame tier, which is $14 a month. And uh, with Patreon handling the merch for us, that gets Michael... Uh, a walk-off coffee mug. So I think the way it is is you have to be subscribed to that tier for three months and then the merch gets uh, automatically fulfilled. So hopefully there's no hiccups with that. Uh, But if there is, let us know, Michael. Um, But yeah, walk-off coffee mug coming Michael's way. And uh, big thanks to everybody for supporting the show in every way that they do, whether you're absolutely on Patreon or just liking and commenting, sharing clips on Reddit, whatever the case may be. We appreciate it. I mean, Adam and I talk about this quite a bit, but we are incredibly, I mean, grateful is the right word, but mind blowing, like a little, it's a little surreal to see what has the community that has kind of gathered around the blue jays and the walk off since we started this thing less than two years ago it's uh it's pretty overwhelming and it's pretty cool so thank you to everyone who uh does participate and interact and is involved here's one here's one comment i'm gonna just put out to everybody whether you're listening on itunes spotify watching on youtube whatever the case may be scott and i are looking for more sponsorship uh, opportunities to help the show grow all that money helps us with the production quality get better lighting better webcams uh, trying to get on the radar some of the different people that we're trying to have on as guests all this sort of stuff but as far as sponsorship goes I mean big thanks to uh, 
Oh My Apparel for supporting us with the uh, Long Toss show. Yes. Out Hostel My yesterday. But I'm going to put this out here for everybody else. Um, what type of sponsorship, uh, I don't know, material, products, uh, is are people interested in that maybe would be a good fit uh, for our audience? I mean, if we can figure out something where the sponsor is happy because our audience is buying shit from them, like if there is yeah, something that's... that you guys are just buying anyways, and you know, we can figure out a way to get you a walk off discount code or something, and then you're able to support the show with just purchases you're already going to make anyways. Let us know. Exactly. Coffee, beef jerky, potato chips. You're like, I want to manscape, but I don't know how. Exactly. Right <laughs> exactly. So. Anyways, that's a fucking, let's just cut that whole thing. All right, you, should we just count us in one more time? Yeah, 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 right. We'll do All this right. again. Okay, we do have a we do have a big a big show ahead of us here. Obviously, a disappointing two-game sweep at the hands of the Yankees. Still lingering in the airs as the Jays start a three-game series against the Rays tonight at Tropicana. Some Jays fans screaming from the rooftop that the sky is falling. They even have numbers to back it up, Adam. We'll get into how bad it is. Bo Bichette finally heating up as we're starting to tell why he led the MLB in hits last year. His bat is red hot currently. The Blue Jays are going to need to right their ship from the inside. There is no outside help coming at any time uh, soon, anyways. Umpiring continues to be a league-wide thorn in the side. We'll talk that. And friend of the show... Former Blue Jay, Zach Logue, continues his impressive start to his career Great outing and today. season with the A's. Yes, we'll we'll talk all about that. So let's start with that <sighs> ugly, ugly Yankee series. So, it, it, I mean, let's start with game one, buddy, because it was a tough one to handle. We live streamed it. We had mm -hmm. probably 50 folks following along with us. Live streams we do every Tuesday, by the way, but this isn't about uh, a quick plug. It was just, it was a tough game to share watching with 50 yeah. fellow Blue Jays fans and even some Yankees fans in the chat. Mm -hmm. Listen, being walked off by the Yankees in New York at the hands of Aaron Judge is a tough pill to swallow. I actually can't really think of many scenarios that makes me like, throw up a little in my mouth more than what I just said right there. The only like extra level of garbage to that feeling would be like if it was in the playoffs. Yeah. Like if that was like game seven of the ALCS. Ugh. It's such a disheartening way to lose a baseball game. Like we sat there for four hours, mm -hmm. ups and downs. And there were some positives out of that outing. That's, that is what's really frustrating about that is that could have been, it felt like it could have been the game to really change momentum of the way the Blue Jays were playing. Okay, It wasn't perfect, but Kikuchi looked really good. They were getting some clutch hits at a timely point in the game. Bichette and Kirk's bats looked red hot. I I what like we I just don't want to dwell on this too much. Like that is just a loss you just need to take sometimes. We're going to get a few of those on our side. I actually think people are reading a little too much into this loss actually. Despite the fact that there were some concerning trends that continued to pop up hitting with runners in scoring position being the big one obviously. Yeah, I mean, to, to take too much into one loss, I mean, it's easy to do, right? But it's also easy to let ourselves off the hook here. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it it's it was one painful loss in the middle of a really bad stretch, though. Yes. You yes. know, like, we're three and seven in our last ten. Mm -hmm. We went from... Winning in every series, it felt like, you know, mm -hmm. to all of a sudden we can't really even beat the Guardians. And I'm not sure if the Guardians are good or not. It's a 500 team, but well, that's a topic for another day. Um, 
This is the this is the first time I felt since we traded for Matt Chapman that maybe this isn't a hundred win team. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I still no, think I agree. we're still a playoff team, oh, and I yeah. still think there's a path to the World Series that comes through a wild card berth. I mean, we are a wild mm-hmm. card team as it stands right now. If the playoffs were to mm-hmm. end today, the Rays and the Blue Jays are wild card teams. Um, I think the Angels also are yes. the third. Wild no, card. the Angels are winning their division currently. I think. Uh, no, Houston is. Oh, Houston. Houston's a half them, game up. Anyways. Point being, I'm not worried that this team is going to make the playoffs, but this team needs to do something to get out of this funk. I mean, we do have a lighter schedule coming up in June, but that's still Mm -hmm. three weeks away, two and a half weeks away. We can't just go three and seven twice waiting till that. I don't know. I, I, there have been some daggers, like there were some daggers for us Jays fans in that Yankees series, right? It was really tough to watch them lose in the fashion they did in game one. Romano blow a save in the way they did. Mm-hmm. The fact that they came back in that game only to lose it. To start game two of that series, a night game followed by an early afternoon game, to watch them load the bases in that first inning, nobody out. And only score one run. I think that inning in game two kind of sums up the Blue Jays' season to date, right? A lot of opportunity and and very little follow-through. Listen, there we'll 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 talk the Jays fans out there who are really, really worried about this. And there are reasons to be worried, okay? I'm not dismissing the concern. And I know I read a thread on Twitter recently that it was a, a, a Blue Jays fan who re- literally took the, the numbers and really broke it down. And his whole point was, we should be panicking. There's no reason to think that they're going to magically come out of this thing. And he made some good points, Adam. And I'm not one to just dismiss numbers, but I'm also old. Okay. I've watched too much baseball to lose my mind over a 30-game sample size where they're still 17 and 15. I understand there's concerns, but I truly do believe that this Blue Jays team is a 95-win team. I truly do believe the Yankees are a 95-win team, although they're on projection for 120 wins. And despite every Yankees fan screaming from the top of the roofs that they are a 120-win team, I'm going to tell you right now, that is not the case. Yeah, and let's talk, let's be... reevaluate at the end of June when the Yankees schedule yes. toughens up and the Blue Jays softens up, and it's a little bit more of an apples-to-apples comparison. Like wherever you are as a fan. Whoever your team is, if you're judging solely on 32 games, you're going to drive yourself insane. There's 130 games left in this season. So, yes, the numbers have looked bad. Yes, there's reasons for concern. Also, small sample size, baby. Right? Like, it's been a rough schedule. The Jays are still above 500. And the truth is, if you were to just take the numbers, forget Forget the peripherals. Forget all of the in-depth analytics, all that sort of thing. Just take that 17 and 15 number. Look at the Jays' schedule and show the Jays fans, okay, this is what they just went through. They went through this meat grinder of a schedule where they played 30 games in 31 days against some of the most difficult opponents that they're going to face all season long, consecutively. And they ended at 17 and 15 going into a series against the Rays at Tropicana before your schedule loosens up quite a bit. Not just with days off, but also just the teams you're playing. Mm -hmm. I think most Jays fans, if you had just presented this to them as an option in March, probably would have taken it. Mm -hmm. 17 and 15 going in, like, yes, it's been a disconcerting last two weeks. But let's keep our heads about us. It's baseball. There's ebbs and flows, ups and downs. 
Yeah, so like four game losing streaks are going to happen, right? For any team, yes. whether it's the Dodgers, the Yankees, whoever. But when when you when you know that a three and seven stretch is going to happen again, this is why it's important to sweep those bad teams. You know, when we're playing Oakland, when we're playing the Rangers, two and one. Yeah. Well, yeah, we won the series. That's not enough. Yeah. Like, it's enough, but it's it's also not. Like, the strategy can't be, we're going to win every series this year by one game, and we'll just mm-hmm. do that, and then that'll... Like, no, because you're going to have bad tacos, you're going to have slumps, and yes. losing streaks are going to happen, for sure. But that's why it, like... Again, not to get too far ahead of ourselves and look past what we have coming up in May, but like mm-hmm. June does get easier, but we need to win like yeah, 15 out of 18 of those games. But this is a team that can get hot. I really do believe that. This pitching staff is strong. The bullpen has been good. I think if the offense finds itself, this is a team that can Mm-hmm. win 15 of 18 games this is a yeah. team that can take seven in a row you know and you never know when a team is going to end a cold streak and yes the jays are ice cold man like this road trip has been ugly they had cold snaps last year right like remember when we were all panicking panicking and they were in that that real rough point in june and they went to washington Maybe it was even July, and they went to Washington for two games, and they lost to the Nationals, and it was just like such a dagger to the heart to all us Jays fans, only for them to go to Oakland and then wind up coming back from that game when they were down by seven, and it kind of turned the entire season around. So you never know when a team is going to get cold. You never know when a team is going to get hot, and you just need to keep playing the games. And I think that this this – Series against Tampa Bay, this is a big one. Yep. Right? Like, this is a division rival. This is a pitching matchup you have the advantage on, right? So the pitching lines up as Kevin Gosman goes tonight against Drew Rasmussen. It's Hinjin Ryu tomorrow against TDA, so it's most likely going to be a bullpen day for the Rays. And then it's Alec Manoa versus Jeff Springs. Well, I this tell you what, it's a 50-50 a... chance it's going to be a bullpen day for the Blue Jays, too. We don't know what we're going to get out of Hinjin Ryu. Very true. But I do think that the leash is going to be short on Ryu. But also, Ryu is a guy who is wily. He he probably lines up better with the Rays than most teams he pitches against. We'll see how it plays out. I I, We've talked about Ryu lots. My expectations are tempered on him. I hope for the best. We'll see how it goes. But that said... Two of the three games we're playing, we definitely have the pitching advantage. And Manoa and Gossman have been studs at the front of this rotation. So, I mean, I feel good about going into it. There have been signs that this offense is slowly starting to, to find their way out of it. So before we get too into that, I do have a couple questions for you. Number one, watching Jordan Romano, the Markham Madman blow that save in game one of the Yankees series and and his velocity was down by about two miles per hour on his fastball, about four miles an hour on his slider. You could tell he was struggling with finding the strike zone. He wasn't feeling good about his fastball. He threw it a few times and it was way outside, so he was really relying on his slider. And, of course, he left one, hung one over the plate that Aaron Judge just absolutely hammered. Yep. Are you worried about Jordan Romano? He has had a lot of work over the season to date. I mean, well, this is, look, this is the conversation we had two weeks ago with this bullpen. It's like the bullpen looks great. Yeah, it does. But it's not sustainable to rely that heavily on your bullpen. And this is where it shows up, right? Like Jordan Romano has 12 saves in 15 appearances. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot. Um, a lot of high leverage opportunities for a guy who, I mean, he was our de facto closer last year, but it was never really his role the way it is now. Yes. Right. Um, yeah. I don't know if, if I'm concerned or not. I've, I mean, He's always kind of struggled with the long ball. 
Mm -hmm. That's always been my one concern with him. I'm concerned more about the two walks that he had yeah. before Aaron Judge than I am. I mean, it must have just been fatigue. Like, we watched him throw, like, six straight sliders to Aaron Judge and then left one mm -hmm. over the plate and paid for it. Mm -hmm. Like, that... There's no Every way the pitcher... game plan is just throw six straight sliders to Aaron Judge and try and strike him out. Like, he unless... didn't have a feel for his fastball. It was pretty obvious, yeah. right? So, Which does happen to pitchers. Like, this isn't, you know, like, you, you send a guy out there 16 times in a year. One of those times, he's not going to be able to locate his best pitch. I mean, yeah. truth is, 25 to 40% of the time, he's not going to be able to locate his best pitch. And I think that's why he was relying so heavily on his slider, and it didn't work out. Listen, he's been lights out. I don't think there's any need to sound the alarms. It is a little disconcerting um, how often he has been used up to this point in the season. Mm -hmm. But on the upside, we had a day off on Monday. We had a day off yesterday. He should be fresh for Tampa. He should be fresh for Tampa. We are starting to see some holes in the schedule where it's not baseball 30 days 30 games in 30 days, right? Well, these so, bats need to help out this bullpen, too. And Oh! Yeah. I mean, we could go off on I mean, that. watching watching Kikuchi dominate like he did and just – you just don't feel good with a 2-1 a, a lead all the time. Yeah, well, Kikuchi gave us five and a third innings, gave up two hits and two runs with yeah, he pitched uh, seven no K's into over the sixth. Four, yeah. four walks. So, like, yeah. Kikuchi gave us, I mean, for Kikuchi, best case mm. scenario against the Yankees. He's pitched 100%. against the Yankees three times this year. He's looked good every outing against the Yankees. Yes. Uh, my confidence in Kikuchi is starting to rise. A couple yes. weeks ago, we said there was a glimmer of hope, and that glimmer has turned into a sparkle. Yes. I am optimistic for Kikuchi. If he can be our I... number four guy, it can give us, like, 15 good starts this year and like five bad starts and maybe like mm -hmm. 10 medium starts. I'm going to be so happy with that. I have been loving, I don't know about Instagram, but I know I've been getting plenty of DMs or even just tweeted at about, boy, oh boy, do you all, all of you on Long Toss have some apologizing to do f to Kikuchi. <laughs> And we well, probably do. Probably I, do. I mean, I love apologizing. I, hey, I, I owe know. Danny Jansen an apology from the first two years of this podcast. So I said, I said the exact same thing when we were talking Kikuchi on Long Toss. I'm like, I hope he makes us all eat a big shit burger to take one from <laughs> Major League, right? Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, Craig Ballard, especially. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't look at us. Yeah. Look at Craig Ballard. Yeah. Like Craig just. Craig didn't like Kikuchi when he was in Seattle. Didn't like the signing as soon as we did it. But he I mean, he would say small sample size. Craig could be the one who's end up right at the end of the year. Like those yes, might be the 100%. only three decent starts we get all season long. Who knows? You never know. So you never know. So we'll we'll go back to the Rays series here and just the fact that the pitching is lined up in our favor for this series. I would love to see. One game, man, where this offense breaks out because we haven't seen it yet this season. No, we sure haven't. Um, can we? Just I want vote? fifteen Look. runs. A <laughs> fifteen run in one game or in the series? Because fifteen in the series would still be big for us right now. Would still be more than we would have normally in a three. <laughs> Five a series. game, but I'm I want one game where they blow it wide open. But sorry, go ahead yeah, and finish your nice. thought. Um, I just wanted to get back to the bullpen before we moved on too much. Um, yes. And just gauge your confidence level in some of our high leverage bullpen arms. Okay. I mean, we don't have to get into it on like Trent Thornton and, and these guys. Yep. Obviously, our feelings are what they are. But we talked Romano and yep. kind of where each of us feel on him. Meza, we're still rock solid on Tim Meza, right? Yeah. Like he's going to give up runs, he's not going to pitch a shutout season. But I don't. I I'm, might I'm, even. I'm never I might even have slightly more. I might have slightly more confidence in Tim Mesa than I do Jordan okay. Romano. Right well, that's now. what I was. That's what I was going to ask. Was if we do a hierarchy of confidence in our. I don't know. For me, our our top five bullpen arms, and I'm not going to include uh, Stripling in this. I know he's kind of in like a weird hybrid role, but let's just call him a starter for now. Yeah. 
for me, the five like big guys that I feel like are maybe our, our top relievers. Maybe Phelps is in this category. For me, Phelps is an honorable mention. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's Richards, it's Simber, both of those guys we traded for last year. And yes. then it's, and in no particular order, by the way, these are just my five. So Simber, Richards, Meza, Romano, and Garcia. Yeah. And I feel like it's Meza even... first, and then it's yeah. then it's Romano, and then it's probably Simber, and then probably Richards and Garcia is my yeah my most shaky of all of them, and that's frust- That's my biggest frustration with our bullpen so far this year. Is I was I feel the same expecting way. more out of him this year than we've gotten so far. And I think it's there. I think we will see moments in this season where we're like Garcia is lights out. You know, like you? if you're gonna, if, if I I really do believe that. I mean, okay. there were times last season with the Marlins where he was fantastic. So if you're just gonna rank him, I I'm very similar to you. I'm gonna go and just out of ten, nine out of ten confidence in Tim Meza, eight out of ten confidence. In Jordan Romano, seven out of ten in Simber and Richards, and then probably about a six to a five out of Garcia. I might yeah. even put Phelps a little ahead of Garcia currently with the way he's pitching. Yeah, that's fair. That is fair. So this this transitions perfectly into the fact, and we're gonna talk this a little bit. This team has to improve from within. Okay, and we kind of touched on this a little bit. Last year, the bullpen was literally on fire. And Shapiro and Atkins didn't go out and make a move until mid-June. And when I say didn't go out and make a move till mid-June, like really, they jumped the gun way before the trade deadline. They were very aggressive. They made a move for the bullpen well before most teams were doing anything. Or even considering moving guys. Like, if you look at the trades they did, they were still with teams like Milwaukee where, you know, they were just trying to bolster each other's weak spots, right? It, they were they were playoff contending teams making mm-hmm. trades early on in the season. Not to dwell on this because Trevor Richards has been a godsend for this team, but boy, Rowdy mm-hmm. Telez is that lefty bat with power should would look nice in the middle of this order as a DH now. Anyways... That's irrelevant. He's gone. Mm-hmm. And Richards has been excellent. But everyone is talking about, well, we need to do some stuff with this team. It is not going to happen, especially now that the playoffs are expanded. Mm-hmm. I don't think we're going to see any. I think early moves are literally going to be the all-star break in mid-July. I don't think we're going to see June moves. So if that's the case, this team has to correct itself from within. Now, we do... By the way, I do want to bring this up because two and a half weeks ago on Long Toss, we were just talking, what would be a trade deadline acquisition that you would like to see happen? Mm-hmm. And I brought up I brought up Josh Bell with the Washington Nationals. I had, before the show, kind of gone over the free agents at the end of this season who were on bad teams, who would kind of fit into the Blue Jays lineup, and Josh Bell kind of stood out to me. Switch hitting guy first base play some outfield he seems like a good fit and i'm not by any means saying that i was the first one to bring up josh bell but i was ahead of the josh bell hype train that seems to be happening currently um and i know adam and i have talked about this several times that yeah we're huge blue jays fans but we're also uh boneheads a little bit (laughs) we're not if, if you're coming to us for your expert baseball advice you're probably doing it wrong. But it's just, it feels nice to throw out a name like Josh Bell and then see everyone else kind of also being like, you know, it just kind of confirms that, you know, I'm not always an idiot. Sometimes I'm on the right train of thought here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Josh Bell, do you want to talk uh, his stats and kind of what he was yeah, doing to the Blue Jays? Yeah, he's killing it this season too, absolutely. So it is important to note, uh, uh, I've been told that hitting handedness is a factor. Uh, and Josh Bell's a switch hitter, so he does bring the option to uh, hit left-handed. Mm-hmm. Um, f- plays first base and outfield. Obviously, would also play DH for the Blue Jays as well, because everybody plays DH, even if you're hitting under 100. <laughs> Bradley Zimmer. Um, 
but let's be honest. He is, I think he's like top five in the league right now in hits. Um, if I just see this here. Yeah, Josh This Bell's... could be a very Ben Revere move from 2015, Ooh, right? Because that's, yeah, good call. that's the one thing Josh Bell does. He puts the bat on the ball. And this isn't a Raymel Tappy uh, kind of bat on the ball where he, they're, no. they're all out. So he's got a 345 batting average with an on-base percentage of 439 and an OPS right now of 953. Uh, all very good. So he's got four home runs to go with that 345 uh, batting average. And, I mean, for anybody who follows war, he's got a war of 1.3. Well, what's that mean at this point in the season? We're essentially 20 percent of the way through the season so that is driving his price up is what it's doing (laughs) well look it's he's on pace for about a six and a half war this year which is like all-star level by the way this is not sustainable this is not going to be josh bell's numbers come september i'm going to tell you that right uh, i'll tell you what for sure this is not sustainable if he stays with washington yes um if he do you have career numbers by chance is that career uh, numbers? Man, you're wrench? really asking a lot of me. Career <laughs> numbers, 265 batting average. Okay. So he's hitting almost 100 points above his uh, lifetime. And at this point, with and almost 3,000 plate appearances. Uh, yeah, he's 29 right now. This is his age okay. 30 season. So 3,000 career plate appearances. We kind of know what he is. Mm-hmm. And he's not this good. But, I mean, a career batting average of 265 would fit in nicely on this team sure would um so what would it take to get him i would say tapia zimmer and (laughs) no um i don't know i don't know man i mean washington is bad they are i mean you talked about it not Mm -hmm. a lot of teams who are going to be sellers until a lot closer to the deadline with expanded playoffs that being said, Washington could make a deal in June if well, there's a look, team that could do yeah. it. <laughs> a team like Washington at 11 and 22, they're 10 games under 500 already. Cincinnati mm-hmm. Reds, another team that could do it. The Detroit yeah. Tigers could be a team that does it. Maybe the Kansas City Royals, they're already they're a ways back. Yeah. Basically everybody else in the league is within like five or six games of 500 mm-hmm. and with expanded playoffs, like you just need to get hot. You need to, a good stretch, you know, one or two acquisitions, and you can get that that last playoff spot. So I definitely think, as far as anybody selling off early, Washington and and the Reds, maybe the Tigers. Yeah. So yeah. there's a possibility that they could they could sell. Maybe they see what we see with Josh Bell, and they go, look, he's hitting well above his career performance at 345. Yes. Let's strike while the iron's hot. We don't think this is sustainable. Let's yeah. uh, get what we can while we can. There's a real chance of that. Who knows? Josh Bell could be there off the of Washington you know what? Uh, team soon. Maybe instead of maybe instead of three mid to low range prospects at the trade deadline, you can get a top ten prospect out of the Blue Jays system. Would you and pay a, a couple... top ten prospect for Josh Bell? He's a pure rental. I mean, you you got to give up something, you know, maybe something like a, re- a redundancy in the Blue Jays system, you know, which would be an infielder, somebody like Leo Jimenez maybe, you know, who has has some high-end value. And, and I like Leo Jimenez, but you, you got to give up somebody, right? Especially if you're going to strike early, especially if you're going to make a deal in June. After we just talked for five minutes about how there's no way that's happening, but, you know. Oh, maybe there is. I mean, yeah. you know, I've, I've kind of talked myself into the idea of like, if I'm Washington and the plan is like, the, hey, we're not going to do any damage this year. Let's, there's something to be said about selling a, a, you know, you sell your real estate when it's worth the most, right? So yeah, man. Josh Bell is never going to be worth this much. Look, Spencer Horowitz, friend of the show. Yeah. Right. He's a uh, first baseman. Yeah. In this organization. I think he's in uh double A right now. He is in double A with, with new fi- the with, with New Hampshire Fisher Cats. This is Lefty a, Bat. 
lefty bat. I think he set the single A hit streak record last season, if I'm not yes, wrong. Yes, he did. You're not wrong. Um, so, like, there's reason to be optimistic about a Spencer Horowitz, but unless he learns another position, he has no future with the Blue Jays. With the Blue Jays. Right, like, first base to... is a total log jam. So. Yeah. And he is a lefty. So, and he catches left, too, which people love that on first base, right? Absolutely. So, we're, yeah. We're all about that. Adam just... <laughs> Adam just eye rolled because he doesn't like these <laughs> sort of baseball old manisms. <laughs> uh, anyways, I want no, pitchers we'll, that can throw both handed. Um, we'll move along, but Josh right. Bell is an interesting option. Yep. Well, I'm 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 sure the Jays won't be the only ones in on him, but if he if if there is someone that moves early. Well before the trade deadline, Josh Bell is a guy Hi. to keep an eye on because his value is probably as high as it's ever going to be for a rental player. And Washington, like Adam mentioned, is already 10 games under 500. Okay, let's talk Bo Bichette because, man, sorry, do you want to? Do you have anything else to add here? No, I was just going to do our due diligence as YouTubers before we get to Bo Bichette because we're approaching the end of the episode here. We're 36 okay. minutes in. If you've watched this far into the episode, please give us a like, comment. If you haven't subscribed already, please do it. Um, it really helps the channel out. Let's nice. Look at you. Now give me go. There we go. We've got a pro <laughs> YouTuber here, folks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's talk Boba Shet because he had a nice cold April. This is a man who led the MLB in hits last year, 193 hits, and was ugly in April. His timing was so off. Everything looked bad. But, buddy, he is, let's face it, he's straight up turning it around. Do you have his main numbers up? I do. Um, I just want to say before, like, this is a guy who led the MLB in hits last year. And despite the atrocious April, he is 15th in the entire MLB in base hits right now. Wow. 34. So definitely a hot, uh, hot May. His uh, May stat line looks something like this. Uh, 16 hits through 48 plate appearances. Good for a batting average of 356. That's better than Josh Bell. Mm -hmm. uh, with an on-base percentage of 396. So he doesn't get much walk still. Obviously, he's never been a big walker. Uh, slugging percentage of over 500. Um, so it's got, got that good OPS. Only one home run. Uh, so far, but he, with this dead ball, he's not going to be a 30 home run guy this year. No. Uh, maybe once they get the balls and the humidors and whatever sorted out, I think he can still be a 30 and 30 guy. Uh, but this year, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, the, the most impressive stats from any of his line right here is just that 356 batting average over the last two weeks. I know that uh, with the Jays' offense so cold, a lot of people have talked about the batting order and should it be shooken up a little bit. Do you think that the Charlie should do a shakeup here? I mean, I don't think that the reason the Jays are losing or have a bad offense currently is the batting order, but, I mean, when you're this ice cold, what harm could it do, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm not as anal about the hitting order as most people are. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that a batting order affects the other team's strategy more than it should affect our own. Like, yeah, uh, what the pitcher decides to do when fa when facing a guy, I think the approach is different. You know, I think it's obvious that you have to, you can't just walk Vladdy when you've got Tay Oscar behind him as like the most mm -hmm. simple example of what I mean by that, right? Whereas when it's Tapia behind Vladdy, you don't throw Vladdy any pitch that's hittable, right? Yeah, you don't necessarily give him an intentional walk, but like everything's outside the zone and bad pitches. And if he chases and helps you, cool. And you're not worried about a tapia hitting a two run shot. So that's where I think the batting order matters. I know it does matter to the guys swinging the bat, it does. but of I don't think it, it should. I think they're all professionals, yeah. and I think whether you're hitting fourth or you're hitting third, you should be able to just. Other than like maybe the first at bat of the game, like if you are the leadoff guy in inning number one, that's the only time I think that should maybe have a like a a role where you're kind of just getting into the rhythm of the game. But like 
no matter where you are in the lineup, you're going to have times starting off the inning against a new pitcher. I don't know. I just don't. I'm going to get roasted for this. No, 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 no. I, uh, I do see we, what you're saying, even man. Play I do see baseball? what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just waiting for it. Yeah, no, for sure. But yeah, shake uh, up the order. I think you reward the guys right? who are hot, put them up higher in general. Yeah. I mean, just get the extra at bat. What do you guy, think? Like, what do you whatever. think about moving Springer to the two hole? <sighs> I could take it or leave it. Okay. I don't know. I think I'd well, I'd rather leave him at at, at one and put a, a good hitter at nine. Yeah. Like that's for me. That's what I would rather see. I. I, I almost feel it. the same way. Like I, especially with Kirk getting hot, I'm like, can Kirk hit eighth and Espinel hit ninth? And let's just, sure. you know, like yeah, let's like five, six, let, seven. Let, That's where our bad hitters can be. Let's yeah, have let, one let bad the, inning let, in the middle, and then let the seven hitter be our our weak spot. Chapman yeah. has struggled mightily the last couple weeks, along with everybody else, but he's been. You know, and he he's always been a power strikeout guy, and we're seeing that firsthand here. That's for sure. I know his yep. average has just dipped below 200, Oof. and he continues to get walks. Though he's he's always been that he's always been that new baseball guy, right? Power walks, strikeouts, but I don't even care with his glove. So throw him in that seven hole. Let him hit some long balls. Yeah, I don't know, man. Maybe look if we're talking, look if we're talking putting Springer down into number two. I almost like the idea of putting Matt Chapman number one. Hmm. Just to kind of get him a change of scenery, surround him with some sure. good bats, like shake it up a little. Absolutely. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't mean, know. so the Mendoza line famously is the line at which if your batting average is below this line, I believe it's 200. Yeah. Just over 200. Yeah. If it's below this line, then it doesn't matter how good your defense is. Your defense is not good enough to make up for a batting average that bad. Matt mm -hmm. Chapman, I mean, as good as it gets defensively, but well below the Mendoza line right now. Yeah. Okay, anything else Blue Jays to add here before we kind of wrap this up? We want to I want to talk umpiring and Zach Logue before Ugh, we shut gross. things down here. Uh yeah. not to Zach Logue but umpiring. Yeah, no, yeah. let's move on from that. Let's go. Let's get into Oh, it. you're not a fan of of uh major league umpiring? That's not at the that's moment. uh that's why we all watch the sport, right? Is to watch uh the umpire show. <laughs> I mean, I nothing better than watching four guys confer and then toss out a pitcher. Man, I don't know what is going on in baseball currently with umpires. I've never seen this much um, bullshit out of them. You know, like it's just been there's a list, right? Like if you think about that mad bomb stare down, right? Madison Baumgartner is getting sticky stuff checked on his hand. And the, the, the ump was literally just sitting there massaging his hand, staring him down. You think about the Red Sox fiasco couple nights ago where the the umpire literally blew up on the hitter questioning strikes and and balls tosses him tosses the manager toss like just it's a toss us he's just throwing everybody out you can't even talk to him we watched it as a blue jays fan right with old jimmy garcia yeah you know and Do you i don't talk about ejection and what you thought of that I mean, Yankees fans obviously think that that was an intentional, an, an intentional hit there on Donaldson, who came out after the game and was like, "No, of course that wasn't intentional." I mean, it's a three-three game in the eighth inning, uh, the count's zero and one. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Donaldson and Donaldson's a hothead. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. Like, and that's why Garcia was so upset is like, he just lost his mind there. And then he throws out Pete Walker and then they buzz Bo in retaliation. And again, even Bichette was like, I don't really think that was intentional. But then Charlie gives a little mouth. Although I, I do enjoy this new thing Charlie does <laughs> yes, of, yeah. of covering his mouth so that John Boy can't, <laughs> can't do, do the lip reading that he does on YouTube. Yeah. yeah, it was so <laughs> funny. Great. I don't know. I don't know what the league is going to do with umpiring. There is, they're in a union. 
there's no repercussions they can do and toss and there's no consequences for the way that they behave or the calls that right or wrong that they do ever since this robo ump shit man when it became more prevalent and it looks like it's gonna happen man like i, I is there a bit of a, a umpire rebellion going on here? Like, something's up. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what it is. It's, it's hard they to They got to be in their bonnet. Yeah, yeah. it's hard to ignore. Uh, we don't need to go too deep into this. We can complain about umpires anytime. But you start going through the list of stuff happening around the league, and it's it's concerning. Yeah, it is. <laughs> All right, can we end on a good note and talk? Uh, yes. Zach Logue. Our boy. Show. Yes. Zach Logue, obviously a part of that trade that brought Matt Chapman to the Toronto Blue Jays. He was a guy that we've kind of been touting as a dark horse Not star, but a guy who's going to come in there and do his job. We kind of had him pegged even with the Blue Jays as a guy who, you know, if there's some injuries, we might get some pretty darn good innings out of him. Left-handed pitcher. He's a control guy. Doesn't have a ton of power. He tops out around 92, 93 miles an hour. But, man, does he throw strikes. And let's talk. He had his first major league game out of the bullpen a couple weeks ago. Yep, he had his first Orioles. major league his first major league start about five, six days ago. And now he just had his second on Wednesday. And let's let's celebrate Zach Logue, buddy. What was his line? Because so, it was impressive against the Tigers. Zach Logue threw seven innings, which is awesome nowadays. Yes. Uh, gave up five hits, no runs, no walks, six strikeouts. Did he get his first major league win? Oh, I don't know. Did they win the game? <laughs> They did win the game, you, I think. Okay, well, you talk. I'll look into whether he got his first major league win or not. I didn't have that stat pulled up here. So, yes. To all of you who are like, you guys just like Zach because he was on the show. That is actually exactly why we like Zach Lowe. Yeah, we talked to him. Uh, he's a super nice dude. What's not to like? He's a super nice dude. He took the time to talk with us. Uh, after the first interview we had with him, he even stayed on afterwards and just shot the shit for about 10 minutes. He came on long toss and spent the full two hours with us. You know, like he's just a, a genuine dude and he was so close to making his debut with the Blue Jays. And of course, you got to give up something good to get something good. And Matt Chapman's about as defensively good at third base as you could possibly get. Filled a huge hole on this team within this organization. And now he's being given an opportunity in Oakland, and he is running with it. He's it's great. Running with it. It's awesome. Absolutely. Did he get that win? No, he didn't. Okay. Still winless. <laughs> okay. Well, he will. He will. No. Good to see. So all the best to Zach Logue. We're uh, rooting for you, bud, and uh, we'll keep everyone posted as he continues his career with the Oakland Athletics. Very Big cool. game tonight. Go Blue Jays. Would love to see Kevin Gosman get that W and right this ship. If there's one guy to be pitching who can do just that, it is Kevin Gosman. He's been absolutely lights out for this team. So we are going to head into the trop and hope that he can do Three his Three game thing. series against Tampa. We got Gosman and we got Manoa. Manoa. Right, can we take two out of three against the Rays? Is that asking too much? Can. I think we can. I th think we can i think that uh this is going to kind of show the the mental fortitude of this team they need to they need to show up yeah all right man good talking to you always a pleasure thank you to everybody who uh listens every day or uh every episode we put out we really appreciate all the hardcores out there we appreciate if you just found the channel that's fantastic please hit subscribe if you haven't already likes and comments always help the algorithm and if you want to reach out feel free to do so at walk off podcast on twitter the walk off podcast on instagram cheers everybody take care have a good weekend